Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're great. Does it feel a bit like Groundhog Day? Are you wondering why I'm grinning like this? So, the last video you saw, I don't know when that will have gone out of me um, taking up my onions and getting my first brassicas in. I was supposed to be dashing off to, I had something else to do that morning, so I was going, rushing, rushing, rushing. Anyway, it's still that morning. Sw sweating because I've been rushing around. And the reason I'm still here, well, my little thing got cancelled. That's fine by me because now I'm going to get to have another two hours in the garden, I hope. And um, one of the things, oh, excuse me, I'm absolutely boiling. Oh. Um, really unexpected this weather. It was supposed to be cloudy, cooler all day, but my giddy goodness, we're already getting up into the mid high 20s digressing so I'm just really excited because I get to spend another couple of hours in the garden and it's the perfect time it's late morning the sun's up the flowers are all fully open so I'm going to do some harvesting of both the lavender and the calendula I'll show you what I do with the calendula for harvesting and drying because quite a few a few of you have been asking recently so we'll do that I'm going to show you the lily in a minute because it's gorgeous oh and I mustn't forget if it looks like I've forgotten please shout at that scream shout at me I need to get my broad bean seed harvest in today so that little patch of broad beans I left at the end of when did they come out end of May um, I've been meaning to do it for the last few days but I really, really want to get them out today because we're due rain tonight. Those pods are beautifully dry. The last thing I want is for them to get a massive soaking. If we get a massive soaking. Still don't believe we're going to have rain, but we'll see. Anywho, let's get back into the garden and do some harvesting of flowers. I'm delighted with how well these lavender have done this year. When you think they only went in a few weeks ago, but they've been giving me absolutely beautiful stems and the bees are just loving them, absolutely loving them. But you know, what is not to love about lavender? Oh, shall we pretend just for one moment that we're in Provence? just gorgeous. Now, ideally, oh, I'm going to sneeze. That's, oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's, she knows I'm full of lavender. I'm not allergic or anything. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so in terms of harvesting lavender for, um, for drying, for keeping, whether you're making little scented sachets, that sort of thing. You ideally want it when it's just, the flower has just formed all its buds, but the buds haven't opened. So I'm gonna get one close up to show you. Let's see. As opposed to, hopefully you can see the difference. So this one, it's, the buds are still really tight. Actually, it started flowering at the top, whereas this one, they're very much opening. When they're at this little bud stage, the essential oils, which give it its smell, are much, much more concentrated. So you'll get a much stronger and longer lasting collection, harvest, if you like, for using your sachets, your soaps, what, whatever you're using them for. However, I didn't want to harvest these um, little babies at that stage for two reasons this year. One is it's their first year, I just wanted to let the plants get established. Two, actually there are three reasons, two, I want them to flower because the bees love them, absolutely love them. So I wanted them to flower for the bees, but also for myself, I absolutely adore the sight of them. So there's no harm in 
harvesting them once they're flowered, it's just that the scent won't be quite as strong and it won't last quite as long. So I'm actually only going to harvest from one plant today because I want to carry on enjoying them. But over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll gradually harvest from them all. Yum, yum, yum. Now, when you are harvesting, um, just be careful how far you cut back. Lavender, rather like rosemary, sage, all of those kind of Mediterranean herbs, the really strongly scented ones, if you think about it, um, they get quite woody in the middle. So when you're cutting your beautiful stem off, just look back into the plant and make sure you're not cutting into the woody part because it's, it's highly unlikely you'll get growth from a woody part. So you always want to leave I would say at least two or three good little leaves down there for the next bit of growth. And this is just, I mean, I can't think of many jobs in the garden that are more pleasant than this. There's no hurry. As I'm doing it, the sound of the bees buzzing all around, they're loving, loving the herb bed. I'm so glad I got it started this year and I can't wait to see it next year once things really get going. But yeah, it's definitely one of those jobs to oh, just, just lose oneself in. <laughs> Apart from the sound of the builders over there. Yeah, lose yourself in the job and allow all the memories of place, all those memories that you associate with that lavender smell. Allow them to just take you over. So I'll carry on and do my pick and then I'll show you how I dry them in the shed. begin to tell you how gorgeous the shed smells already absolutely divine so once you've got your little harvest in um this is i'm basing everything i'm doing on when i used to have an actual back garden um and grow my own lavender it's been a long long time so i'm excited to do this again i'm just going to tie a little rough bunch this is purely for hanging for drying I'm not going to present this bunch as is eventually, so I'm not bothered about, for instance, the stalks being different length, the heads being different sizes. But if you were doing anything where you want to keep the, the, the plant or the flower and stalk whole, then you'd maybe sort it into ones where you've got similar size heads and similar <clears throat> length or at least trim the stalks. But like I say, this is all purely for the flower. So I'm not bothered about how pretty or not this bunch looks. Very tight tie. Now, this is the important bit. Oh, missed one. It's escaped. That can go with my little bunch. <clears throat> so ideally you want it hanging upside down, air circulating, to dry, 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 dry. But of course they're really, really, really little um, flowers and they do drop easily. So what I'm going to do now, I also do with, for instance, fennel, for saving fennel seed. I'm going to put it in one of my trusty brown paper bags. Excuse me, noisy a second. And actually the light's horrible there, isn't it? Let me see if I can move you a second struggling to get the light right today because it's so bright outside and then we're suddenly so dark in here. Yeah, so, um, like I said, because these little heads are so teeny, teeny, tiny and as they dry they will, some of them start to drop off, 
I'm going to have them hanging in the bag. So where I just tied the um, bunch up, I'm going to use that string upla to also now tie the bag up. It's a big enough bag, so there's plenty of space for the air to circulate. Just give that a tie. And now this whole thing will be tied to my drying rack up there. Let's get it hung. Th this also I do with um, my, where I'm saving seed from, for flowers as well. So if I was saving calendula seeds, for example, all exactly the same, tie a bunch together, put them into a, a, any kind of paper bag, hang them to dry. As the seeds drop out, they're all collected for you in your little bag. <laughs> Soon gonna be fighting for space on the drying rack. What will all the onions? And then the red onions will come. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't need to use the drying rack for the calendula, but actually let me show you how busy the drying rack has become <laughs> on a set. So oopla, at the moment from this morning. It's chock full of onions, they will need to be threaded down through. Now, that bag of lavender, there's actually probably space in that bag to hang a couple more bunches because I've got another five plants to harvest. And then, oh, I'm going to be fitting into here some red onions and tra la la la. -la. So, yeah, it's getting busy, but isn't that fun because that means the harvests are coming in. Whoopee! Right, let's go and harvest some calendula. Wow, literally all around me at the moment is just buzzing with life. So many bees and hoverflies. Okay, so when you're harvesting your calendula, I'll just quickly say that literally over the last few weeks, all I've been doing when I've been coming to the garden is watering. That's all I've had time for. So I am going to be deadheading today as well because... Some of them have come and have already gone over. I deadhead and I harvest because by doing that, it keeps the plant going. It keeps producing more and more and more and more flowers. And then towards the end of the season, I will stop harvesting, stop deadheading, leave a little selection and let those develop their seeds. So, ideally for picking your calendula, Actually, this morning is pretty much perfect, except it's getting a bit too hot. <clears throat> um, I like to pick in the morning. I'm just going to dead hide while we chat. I like to pick in the morning. The sun's up. There's been enough sunshine to um, dry out any dew that might be on them from overnight. Before they get too hot in the day and start to wilt. But basically, this time when they have their flowers fully open like this one. See that? I, can't, I actually can't see a thing it's about. That's now on perfect. So the other thing, when I harvest them, I do cut quite a bit back. I go back to basically where I can see the next little bud is coming and forming. So that one is a bit shorter, but that's what we're gonna do. I harvest them. I don't just take the heads because then you get left with loads and loads of dead stalks. So I follow down to where the next one's trying to grow from and take it from there. You're a dead head. So for instance on here, actually I'm looking over myself, can't quite see, but there we go. So it will take quite a bit of time. It's definitely not something to do if you're in a hurry but then why would you why would you want to hurry something like this if you don't have much time stick to what's important whether it's watering or weeding what have you and if worse comes to the worst and you don't have time to harvest you'll have a whole bed of seed for next year eh yay i haven't bought calendula seed for I don't know, four or five years, can't remember. And what's lovely is I get 
so much seed, I get enough to give to friends as well. So I'm very happy to know that there are some happy calendulas springing up on the other side of the pond. Yay! <laughs> Fab. <sighs> I love summer. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Right, I'll tell you what, this is going to take me forever. So why don't you all go off and have a nice cool drink of something, a nice long cool drink of something. Come back in a minute. We'll get these to the shed and I'll show you how I dry them. I haven't by any means harvested all of them, um, but just enough to sort of show you what I do with them. <laughs> and it couldn't be simpler. Oh, let me take a few here. Literally all I do is anything that's to hand. So this is a propagator lid, for example anything where I can just spread them out, lay them out a bit, you know, they don't have to be precisely not touching each other, etc, etc. Um, sometimes I get, <laughs> when I get far into the season, for example, and I'm really, really bored with doing the harvest, I'll end up going, to, oh, just chuck them in any old how. But at the moment it's so warm and so dry in the shed that these will dry in Oh, no time, just a matter of days. What I've done is I've just brought the dead heads up to the shed as well because I can show you with them um, roughly what to do once your gorgeous little calendula flowers are dry. The other thing about calendula, something about them that makes them sticky. I don't like sticky. Should have kept my gloves on, never mind. Anyway, so as you can see, they're there's quite a lot in this tray, so that's what I mean. I don't worry too much about, oh, do it in a single layer, this, that, and the other. Oh, that's too short, I haven't got time for any of that business. So now, let me just pop that out of the way. There we go, there's one propagator lid um, filled up. When I do the next one, another one, I'll simply stack it like that so there's still good air circulation. And I found over the last few years that, that works perfectly well. Now, with once they are dry, they're going to look something like oh, it's falling apart because it's such a dead, dead head. They really, really shrink down in, in the, the petals, really shrink down in size. So, I mean, obviously, this has shrunk even more because it's basically dying back. And hopefully, you'll pick yours when they're at their fullest. But, like I say, even so, they will die back. And then once you've had them in your tray, in your shed or wherever, you're keeping them for quite a while and you can see that they've started, well they've gotten pretty dry, it's simply, I can still feel that these are quite uh, moist still, but it's simply a case of just pulling out the petals, pull out the petals, pull out the petals, pull out all the petals, obviously compost heap, and then I'll end up with a tray of, it looks like, um, what do you call it? Oh, I've forgotten the name. That's going to annoy me like mad now. Oh, I know there's going to be loads of you shouting at the screen. <sighs> Comes from crocuses. Costs a fortune. It begins with S. Sa Saffron. There we go. It was in there somewhere. Let me just move those so you can see. So they almost start to look like little bits of saffron. So after I've pulled them out, if, they, if I think there's any chance that they're still not quite dry, I'll do that, but I'll spread them out more thinly. And once they are completely dry, then very simply, old jam jars, any kind of old jars, I fill up my jars with them, airtight jars, stick them somewhere shady at home, and then I've got them to hand whenever I need them to make up my next batch of oil. And like I said in the oil video the other day, um, I pretty much have a batch of oil on all the time because it's the only thing I use on my skin and I love it. Right, calendula's done. What was next on the list? Let me look at the calendula again while I remember what was next on the list. Oh, I know, it's harvest the broad bean seed. Yeah, let's go and do that. It's hard to believe that on such a beautiful day we're supposed to be having rain tonight, but that's what they're saying, so I'm not risking leaving these. Now, 
these have been this is six weeks since the original harvest and you can see and probably hear how dry these plants have become looking at it now i think i didn't save enough plants hmm never mind let's pick them pod them and save them to plant in october So they may not look much at the moment, but hurrah, because this, let's see if I can do it one handed, oh it's so dry, this is my seed to go in come October, yay, Tuck that away a second, let me show you, there we go, actually it's probably worth saying it's, it's a really good time of year to just have a little walk around the garden and start to earmark plants for seed saving. Um, go and have a look, what, what's your healthiest plants? What are your strongest plants? And just maybe, I don't know, tie a ribbon onto them or put a stick next to them with a bit of string flapping, just to, just to note that that's for next year because seriously, you can save yourself a fortune by saving your own seed. Not only are you saving a fortune, but this seed is acclimatised to my little garden, isn't it? So, I'm going to get podding and then um, storing until October. Seeing as it seems to be a bit of a flower day, I'll have to, obviously, show you this. Oh, what a beauty. So many buds and buds to come but so many absolutely stunning flowers already look at those oh, they're magnificent these are works of art absolute works of art and they smell utterly heavenly too oh what more could a girl ask for in her vegetable garden <laughs> than a little bit of frippery called a lily? Wow, it suddenly got really, really hot, as you can tell by the colour of my cheeks. So I'm starting to make my way home, just coming via the shade of the trees in one of our local parks. And I thought I'd give you all a quick little update on how the community orchard is going. So, this is nothing to do with my allotment site. This is one of the many parks in my area. There's so many lovely parks. Actually, it's one of the reasons I moved down to this neighbourhood. I've been living up in sort of Kensington and Chelsea area for years and years and years. But needed a place of my own. Couldn't afford Kensington, obviously. <laughs> had my dog so I looked for somewhere with lots of parks and this is the neighbourhood I found. So in this little park we have a sort of friends of the park and they gather regularly. Oh let's just go and find some shade a second. It's really really belting hot. Oh that's better. Mm. So they, um, the friends of the park regularly get together to do things like pruning the rose bushes doing little bits of gorilla planting of sort of bulbs and what have you. So the park is owned by the council, but the community sort of give it care as well. And I'm just going to swing you around in a second. Last January, 
the council gave permission for the Friends of the Park to plant a trial community orchard. It was so lovely, what a great day. Freezing cold day in January. It was my first proper outing after having had my knee surgery. So I was still on crutches. Oh, actually I was down to one crutch then because I, was, I remember I was able to hold the camera in one hand and crutch in the other. But it was great. And then, I don't know, about 20 or so of us gathered to get trees planted, plus a couple of memorial trees for a small child who was run over in the area and unfortunately killed. But really special, beautiful day. And subsequently, members of the community have been asked to adopt an individual tree to look after it in the first few years of its life. So I've adopted the pear tree and part of my being an adoption parent duties is that I come to water once a week at least through this summer in its first year and then we'll be advised um, by our, our boreal list, I could never say that word, in terms of future care. So it's over here in the corner and I'll just also let you see how ooh, the other trees are doing as well. So as we walk up to it, this one is my pear and little apple in front. Let me just grab my bags again. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm walking and I'm dragging my granny trolley behind me with um, a few litres of water in. But yeah, they all seem to be doing okay. There's a few more, as you can see in the background. Little, that little teeny tiny one just there it was actually do donated by a lady. She dug it out of her garden to bring down here. Oh, it's going to be so bright. Let's try and stick to shady bits. So as we can see on the apple tree, I can't remember which variety it is, but there's fruit. Isn't this wonderful? So imagine now you come out for the day with your family, with your kids. You sit under the tree for a bit of shade. You look up and you realise, hang on a minute. I could have a snack of an apple. Oh, yay. So here is my lovely pear. Actually, let me try and come around this way because that sun is glaring bright. There it is. You can tell it's a windy sight, can't you? Now, per tree, it appears to have, this is what I'm advised by lots of people, pear rust. Can we see up there? See the orange spots? Now, maybe you can see it more clearly there. I've been told that um, there's nothing that can be done about it in terms of prevention or cure, alas, but that it won't affect the fruit nor the fruiting. So I need to get busy watering, but I want to show you how we water because it's very, very nifty. So hang on a second, I'm going to have to put you on the tripod because I need two hands to water. I don't know how clearly you're going to be able to see this, but the whole trunk is wrapped around by this sort of plastic sort of wrapper with a nice zip down the front. Then in the back, in this bit, oh, it's wiggled around a bit since last watering. There's a, there's a sort of a, a double pouch sewn into it. So I water into that bit, Amy. Now, this is actually kind of going into a bag almost. A sealed bag. Oh, don't spill a drop, baby. It's wasteful. A sealed bag, which has got some very, very tiny holes in the bottom, so it works like a sort of a, a drip irrigation. Sorry, crunchy bottles. So that in this really, really hot weather, especially on our London clay that just bakes so hard and cracks, if I was just watering at the base of the tree, it would probably all just run away. Whereas doing it this way. Hopefully, the plant gets, basically, it's just a, a continuous or almost continuous supply. So, uh, let me just actually take you off there and I'll try and show you on here. Just around the back a bit. So, where I've, up there, where I've just poured it in. Oh, it's too bright to see, isn't it? Can you see how this is sort of thicker here. Let me show you sort of splodging it there. I can feel that's all the water in there held in there and it will just now very very slowly drip out over the next few hours. 
and keep this wee baby happy for a few more days, I hope. Yay! Oh, what a ridiculously gorgeous day and unexpectedly. There you all are again. Sorry, look at the west. <coughs> I'm trying to check the screen to see where I am and see where the sun is. But um, anyway, yeah, really unexpectedly hot. It's beautiful. Life would have been easier if it wasn't so hot, but never mind. So I hope you've enjoyed all the stuff with the flowers in the garden today. I certainly have. And all the other little bits and bobs of jobs gotten done. And a quick wee visit to my pear tree. Yay! So for now, before I completely uh, melt, I uh, feel like my face is running off already. I'm going to say cheerio. Stay well, everyone. Stay cool in the heat. Enjoy dancing in the rain when it comes. I think we're all going to be <laughs> stripping naked and running out into the streets tonight to just, just love that rain. Oh, I can't wait. Maybe not the naked bit. You'll never see me again. I'll be arrested. Well, on that kind of slightly iffy note, I'll say a proper cheerio. See you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care and be happy.